Hey guys, so today we're going to look at a different problem called regular expression matching. Uh, it's a very classic uh, problem of uh, dynamic programming, but uh, we're going to solve it first using recursion, and then I'm going to show you how we can optimize it using memorization. So the problem says that you are given a string and we are given a pattern, and you have to check whether that string matches with that pattern. So for example, in this particular case, example one, there is a given string as AA, and then there is a pattern called A, so it does not match. Now in the second example, it's given that there is a string called AA, and there is a pattern called A star, uh, it matches. So the matching rules are that if the character is dot, then it can match with any character. And if the, the character is star in the pattern, then it can match either with the zero or more occurrence of the preceding token. So that is why this, this pattern matches because this star can take A and basically formulate itself into A. So this becomes something like A, A. So we're gonna take another example just to show you how it matches. So for example, let's say the string is A, A. And let's say another string is <clears throat> B star A dot. So this will match because the star can simply say that I will not take B as a character. So this can be zero. So this will negate to zero occurrence. And this A will match with this and this A will match with dot. So this will match. So how can we solve this? So a simple way of solving, solving this is using recursion. And how does it work? So in this particular case, so for example, if I take an example of this A and A star. So while using recursion, we have to consider two main cases. Case number one is when the next token, let's say if the starting position is I here and the starting position is J here. So the two cases which we have to consider is if the next token in the pattern is star or not. So let's say the first case is when j plus one character it j plus one is not equal to star. So if the if the next token in the pattern is not a star, then we just have to check whether the current token is matching or not. So if j plus one token is not a star, we have to check whether character at i is equals to equals to character at j. If it matches, then the pattern matches, otherwise it does not match. For example, if the, the string is a, a and the pattern is a, b, it will never match because <clears throat> the j plus one token here is b in the pattern and b does not match with a. So this is a, this is a false. So this is the first case, which is a very simple case. Now let's take a second case. Second case is where character at j plus one is equals to equals to star. Now, this is a bit complicated case because in this case, we have to check, check two more cases. And the first case is where the first character matches. And the second case is where the first character does not match, but we can skip it using the star where the first character match and there is a second uh, where the first character does not match so for example if the pattern is a a and you are given b star a a then you can skip the previous character here or you can skip the current character if star is your j plus one character so this is the this is basically the second case if we are taking the original example of a star this falls into the first case because we can use previous token or like the j token to fill the j plus one token so in this case if j plus one token is a star and the current token a a matches then we can use a here also to check whether it matches now <clears throat> let, let me show you in the code how we can use this technique to
to uh, to solve this problem and it will become a bit more clear while we code <clears throat> so this is the this, this is just a sample case which i ran to uh, to check whether this case pass or not now let's let's try to code this <clears throat> we'll, we'll create a different function called boolean match it will be a recursive function and here in i and j are the current indices of s and p So what we're going to do is first we're going to check the first character or the current character. So let's say I use boolean first match as a first character match. And here we're going to check s dot character at i is equals to equals to p dot character at j or if the p dot character at j is equals to equals to dot remember that dot means that it can match with any character so this is a very very simple thing we can add so it simply says that either the first two characters are exact match in the pattern string or the the pattern has a dot at that position so this means it's a first character match now now we have two cases to consider if j plus 1 is less than p dot length this simply says that it should not go index out of 1 and if p dot character at j plus 1 is equals to equals to star so this is a complicated case which we will consider just in a second but well, let's consider another case else if the next character is not a star then what we can do is we can simply say that we just want to match first match like it's the first character matched and match the next two tokens we will have a an answer variable to store the result So this is answer is equals to first match and match. This simply says that consider the case where this is given. So here we just match the first character A and A. And as the next character in the pattern is not equal to star. So we can simply say that we're going to move ahead with the with this case where we just match the first character and we just say that in the recursion pass the next two tokens because the next character is not a string so we just have to it's not a it's not a star so just we just have to keep on comparing the next indices but if the next if the next token is a star then we can either skip the current token in the pattern or we can keep on matching this current token with the next values in the string so this simply says this simply means that if answer can be first match if the first character matches then we can we can also move ahead with matching the the next token in the string with the current token in the pattern so what this means is that if this is given i'm taking this a and matching with the the next token in the string so for example if the case is like this if a matches with a then i can keep on matching a in the next half next portion of the string so this is a mandatory condition to match the current token with the next tokens in the string now the other case is like if I just want to skip the current token in the pattern, if I, if I don't want to consider current token A in the pattern and I want to skip the entire thing, so this will be help, helpful in matching the rest part of the, the pattern with the current values in the string. So 
so we will just keep the current token of the string and we'll match it with the, the next token in the pattern so we are using j plus 2 because we want to skip the next token as a star and we want to start from the next index after the star so the so it simply says that this match i j plus 2 it will keep on matching the the token which starts after the star with the current index position of the string so if something like this exists then it will match b with the, the starting position where we are at right now so it will match b with this entire string it will start matching b with the entire string so this are these are two cases when the next token is a star now here we will also have a base case like if we reach the end of the pattern then return true if the pattern the string has reached its end so this simply says that if we have reached at the end of the pattern then we should also reach uh, to the end of the string otherwise we have not we, we have not able to we are not able to match the string with the pattern we also have to add a condition here so that it can it does not end up in the in the index out of one exception So let's say if I run this function from the main function here with the 0, 0 index position S and P and we return return answer from here. So this is the simple recursion way of doing this problem. Let's see if it runs. So it runs and let's say if we can submit this. So we are able to submit this, but you can see that the time complexity here is kind of exponential because we are kind of repeating a lot of sub problems and we are not able to memoize it or we are not able to cache the result which we are, uh, which we have computed earlier. So it's like recomputation of the previous sub problems. So let's try to memoize this. Uh, it's a very simple uh, technique. Uh, so how we memoize memoization is just a technique to cache the res cache the results of the previous computation so we'll take a boolean array to memoize now we are taking the boolean uh, as a wrapper object uh, not the limited data type because we want to store th three different states a state where nothing is existing like null state and when there is a result called true or false so if we just take the if we take the boolean area of like this primitive data type then we will not be able to store null we have to initialize it with some kind of value dummy value like minus one or something so to skip that we can simply take boolean array of uh, the wrapper class uh, let's initialize this array here So here we are checking that if the memorization array contains a result for these two indices, then don't don't come don't come recompute that part of the the pattern and string matching. And store the computation result for this index positions here. So these are just two lines we add to make this more efficient. Return if memoization array contains the result for these two indices. And here, store the result. 
So this, this entire portion will compute the result for i, i and the jth index and store it in the, into the memorization array. And in, in future, if we see that is, if we see those indices again, then we don't have to recompute this entire thing and we can simply pick the result from the memoization array. Let's see if it runs. It runs. Let's submit this. So as you can see, the, the time complexity has been greatly improved. And the time complexity of this approach is order of n square, where n is the length of string s or p if they both are equal. Or we can simply say order of s dot p, where s is length of string s and p is length of string p. Uh, also, the space complexity is similar. Space complexity. Uh, remember that in the recursion, the space complexity, if we don't take the recursive call stack and we just take the external storage, then the space complexity in the recurs recursive technique is constant. <clears throat> but the time complexity of recursion is exponential because we are uh, recomputing a lot of sub problems which we don't have to do and those sub problems they appear twice or thrice because of these two two branches which we create while we are solving this problem so let's let me submit this again yeah so this was it uh, this was basically a way to solve regular expression matching with recursion and then optimizing it with memoization. Thank you guys for watching this video.